Hey what's up, it's Dan or DMAN96 here and welcome back to our F1 Manager career mode with Stuart GP and we are going to be doing the Malaysian Grand Prix in today's episode, the second to last round of the season and a brand new track for the 1999 Formula 1 World Championship as well. Last time out of the Nürburgring, the European Grand Prix, retirements once again helped us and we finished second in that race but more importantly Michael Schumacher capitalised on Mika Hacken's retirement and won his second home Grand Prix to take the lead of the Drivers' Championship, which puts him one point ahead of Hakkinen with two rounds to go. If Hakkinen continues with his bad reliability, Schumacher can win the championship in this race. David Coulthard is uh, out of the contention to win the championship, but is 11 points clear of Johnny Herbert, so it looks like third is going to be Coulthard's. Johnny Herbert is 8 points clear of Damon Hill in 4th position, so it looks like Johnny Herbert will be securing 4th in the championship. Then we have a battle of 5th between Hill, Fizzy Keller and Frenson, with Barrichello just sitting outside it, of, of it. I don't think he's going to get 5th. It looks like it's going to be 8th for Rubens Barrichello. Two drivers that can still race, haven't scored points yet in Pedro Diniz and Marc Genet. Of course, Delarosa and Takaki are pretty much out for the rest of the season with no engines. And then the Constructors' Championship. Uh, McLaren are leading that. Ferrari can still win if they get one twos in the in the next two rounds, but it's looking unlikely. It looks like McLaren are going to secure the constructors' championship this weekend, unless something amazing happens. But what is more exciting is about third between ourselves and Jordan. A good result for us could see us take third in the championship. We are currently sitting five points ahead of Jordan. And we don't know anything can happen. And it's looking very entertaining. Looks like we're definitely going to secure either third or fourth. But we need another good result here. And then in the team manager standings, we are still leading that. Ron Dennis and John Top falling back. And Tom Walkinshaw falling down to last uh, after not being able to take part in the previous few rounds. So that's all we need to know from the previous episode. And we're going to move on to the practice session for the Malaysian Grand Prix very soon. But before we do that, it's time to check out the news report. Only two pieces of news to announce today, and we have some interesting stories to report. Benson have made some excellent announcements of this series, such as the likes of David Coulthard and Neil Oatley from McLaren joining the team, which will be important for their future. They have managed to keep hold of technical director Pat Simmons, which completes their strong personnel lineup for 2000. However, on the opposite side of things, McLaren haven't made the best of announcements, including Ford ZTEC engines and Minardi personnel Massimo Cusimano and Luca Badoa. However, this piece of news is by far their most controversial yet. With Michael Schumacher already announced as their driver number one, there has been lots of speculation of who will be his teammate. And it was just announced today that the ex bar test driver Patrick Lamarie will be partnering the current championship leader next season. Despite only having two years of F3000 experience and a best championship result of 15th in 1997, this is a very big risk for McLaren and that completes the race driver lineup for each team of the 2000 season. With only two rounds remaining, can Michael Schumacher keep that one point lead over Mika Hakkinen or the Finn fight back and finally get some good luck to become a two time Formula 1 world champion? Let's go straight down to the practice session of the inaugural Malaysian Grand Prix. So it hasn't been the best practice session for us for Downing 11th and 13th. John Lacey splitting us, not really what we wanted. Hopefully we can bounce back in qualifying. But what is interesting there is Michael Schumacher fastest, but Mika Hacken is down in 5th. He's way off the pace and he's really struggling in the second half of the season. And we've also got to remember Hakkinen has had a lot of bad luck in the second half of the season. And because of that, Schumacher's one point ahead of the championship. Another retirement and a win for Schumacher... We could see the championship slipping from Hackenden's hands here. But Damon Hill, impressive and fair once again. He's always been up there. He seems to have had the better season out of two Jordan drivers. And he's having a decent time there in third in practice. This is going to make for a very interesting qualifying session, I think. Could we see David Coulthard or Mika Hackenden bounce back to challenge Michael Schumacher for pole position? It's time to move on to the qualifying report. It was the Prost of Jano Trulli slowest in qualifying as the sole Minardi of Luca Badoa starts 18th, whilst teammate Gine for some reason wasn't able to set a lap time. The two BAR drivers line up in 14th and 15th, with the two Salvas just ahead in 12th and 13th. Ralph Schumacher lines up in a solid 10th place, 
Giancarlo Fisichella puts his Benz in 8th as both drivers line up behind each Stewart driver on the grid. Both Jordans start on row 3 and were nearly a second off the pace of 4th place Eddie Irvine. Whilst David Coulthard outqualifies teammate Mika Hakkinen to second on the grid, this puts Michael Schumacher in a good position for the race tomorrow, with a small chance of securing the world title this weekend in Malaysia. OK, so the qualifying session has just finished. Gary Anderson says that uh, it's going to be end of a one-stop strategy. Low tyre wear, what you really expect around Malaysia. And yeah, qualifying didn't go well, better than practice, but only 7th and 9th behind the two Jordans, not really where we want to be. But um, Michael Schumacher on top for Ferrari, and Mick Hackenden only third, crucial for the championship there. And we all remember a bad result for Hackenden. We could see him lose the championship this weekend. We're hoping to try and beat two Jordans because we've got a third place to battle in the Constructors' Championship here. It's going to be a close one, I think. We're only a few points ahead. It could go down to the final race. The last thing I've just got to point out is that uh, Mark Genet has also joined the two hours drivers uh, as running out of engines, I think, as he didn't qualify. So we've got to keep an eye out for Luca Badawa because he could be not starting the Japanese Grand Prix. That's a shame because uh, Minardi scored their first point of the season last time out in the Nürburgring. It's a bit of a shame that they may not compete in the final race. But now, let's get on with the Malaysian Grand Prix. Will Michael Schumacher clinch the title this weekend? What will the battle for third place in the championship be like? Let's find out, shall we? Here we go. On board Rubens Barrichello. Start of the inaugural Malaysian Grand Prix. Not the round of the season. And it's lights out and away we go. And Barrichello... I think he's got off to a good start, but look at the start that Michael Schumacher has got. He has pulled away from the rest of the field, and there is a Minardi who's just managed to jump the field for some reason. And is holding everyone up, unfortunately. I think that was a Minardi, anyway, but yeah, Minardi seems to be holding everyone up. Uh, Mark Genet, actually, who has no entrance this weekend, has up in fifth. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, to I've said this game is broken in many sort of ways, and there is one of the uh, uh, examples. He is in fifth position, he's holding up a ginormous truly train. And, well, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I'm going to be expecting Mark Nate to retire any time soon. But no, he's still keeping it on the track. And there is a Barrichello. Deathly trying to find a way past a very, very slow Minardi. What is Janae even thinking about here? This is just uh, appalling stuff from the Minardi driver. Meanwhile, back at the front of the field, we have um, Michael Schumacher capsulising on all of this and has built up a huge lead and Eddie Irvine is ahead of Hakkinen. Michael, Michael Schumacher leads from David Coulthard in second. Could Eddie Irvine spice up the championship battle helping his teammate here here with Malaysian Grand Prix? And finally Mark Genet has actually let everyone else go and he's dropped to the bottom of the field. But um, however we're still in 7th and 8th position. Heinz out Frenson seems to be the biggest loser here. He's down in 11th and he started ahead of us. Fizzy Keller, the gainer, in fifth, and only nine seconds off Hackenden, but Schumacher still continues to lead. Coulthard slowly catching up, though. It's going to be a close one, I think. Okay, he was somehow losing time to Damon Hill. That's already a bit concerning. We are going to put both cars on the hold position because we are quite a way ahead of John and Lacey, and he is in the slower car. So we're not going to worry about it too much. Uh, because um, well, Damon Hill's only set to score one point at the minute, so any retirements could actually change us up a bit. I think. Luca Badura is out in the race with an engine failure. I'm still surprised that Mark Jones actually had enough engines for the rest of the season. It's not really going our way, and we've got a Jordan in the points, and we've uh, we're still going to lead them in the battle for third. But it's going to be unfortunate here because. Uh, we're not going to score and Jordan are going to score, which that is going to be annoying. Right, both drives are pitted now. That's good. We're still in 8th and 11th though. And Johnny Herbert's out for race as soon as I say it. That's a shame. So it looks like his uh, chase for third place in the championship is over. He can't beat David Coulthard now because he, uh, he would need a Coulthard to retire him to finish in the top two. So a shame there. Rubens Maricalo is still in this race. Hopefully he can push to try and uh, at least salvage something of this but slightly disappointing weekend for us, to be quite honest. Meanwhile, at the front, I'm quite surprised that neither of the big four has retired here. I'm quite surprised there's only four retirements so far. Nothing much happening at all. Rubens Barrichello is in seventh position, apparently. One place away from the points. 
I need to have friends nice for Tybo. One more time. Could see Barry Kelly get into the points. I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, Jordan and I are going to beat us here. So here we are on board with Michael Schumacher, the man leading this race. The man who won the last race, of course, for European Grand Prix. And he's been pushing ever so hard here to try and take this World Championship. He was nowhere in this battle. He was so far behind Mika Hakkinen. And Hakkinen's bad luck has affected him here. Michael Schumacher is going to extend his lead in the Championship to, I think, seven points ahead of Mika Hakkinen, who is on course to finish in third position here at the Malaysian Grand Prix. David Coulthard is going to beat his teammate on the track and finish second here. A good result for the Scots as he just goes into the penultimate corner now. Only one more corner to go and McLaren actually despite not being able to win this race and it looks like the Drivers' Championship could be going out the window here for them. The second and third place is going to be enough to secure McLaren Mercedes the 1999 Formula 1 Constructors' Championship as David Coulthard comes across the start finish line here in Malaysia and finishes second here for McLaren. Mika Hakkinen still has a few more corners to go. He's stuck behind one of the Williams drivers. And it might have been a bit of a difficult second half of the season for Mika Hakkinen, only picking up one victory. This is his first podium since that victory in Austria. But with the 10 points, it's going to be enough for McLaren. Only 13 points for Ferrari and 10 for McLaren. It's going to be enough for McLaren Mercedes to become the 1999 Formula 1 Constructors Champions here in Malaysia. So one championship is decided. Still got one more to go. And that will go all down to the wire the Japanese Grand Prix. We just missed out on points. Eddie Irvine took fourth. Giancarlo Fisichella fifth. And Damon Hill clapped in the final point for Jordan. So they gained one point on us in the battle for third. But it's not going to be enough, I don't think. As it's Michael Schumacher that wins from the two McLaren drives in second. If my calculations are correct, McLaren have secured the Constructors' Championship from 1999 Formula 1 season. And indeed they have. 124 points is enough for McLaren to take the Constructors' Championship with one round to spare. Ferrari in second with 97 points have secured their second place in the Championship. But there is still a battle for third between Stewart and Jordan. So what I can confirm now actually, since we're not going to finish uh, below sixth from the championship, is that there will be a second season of F1 Manager. I'll be going uh, into more detail of that in the next episode. But we are going to finish either third or fourth in this championship. What a season we have had. We've picked up several podium finishes and have come even close to wins in four occasions in San Marino, Belgium, Italy and Europe. It's been a brilliant season for us and there will be a second season of Apple Manager coming out very soon but we've still got one more round to go. In the Drivers' Championship standings Michael Schumacher has extended the points gap to seven points ahead of Mika Hakkinen in second and for Hakkinen to win in Japan he needs to win the race and Schumacher cannot finish in the top three. If Schumacher finishes fourth, they'll be on equal points. But I think Hakkinen will have the alphabet advantage. Because this game is quite stupid, equal points doesn't go down to count back of race positions. It goes to the alphabetical order. And as you can see here from Panis and Zonta, and also on, on uh, Diniz and Janay, and even Della Rosa and Takaki, uh, that they are ahead of them on the alphabet. Uh, Della Rosa ahead of Takaki, Diniz ahead of Janay, and Panis ahead of Zonta. It's alphabetical order of the surname, it turns out to be. If Hakkinen wins the race, Schumacher has to finish in the top three if he wants to win the championship. It's going to be a tough challenge for Hakkinen, but it's going to be ever so exciting. Further down the order, Johnny Herbert and Damon Hill are still battling for that uh, coveted best of the rest position in fourth. Rubens Barrichello can still overtake Heinz Alfredson. The best position he can probably get is sixth ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella and, Dame, and uh, Heinz Alfredson. It's always played for in the final round. It's going to be very interesting. Team Manager Championship, despite uh, Michael Schumacher leading the uh, Drivers' Championship, John Tart still cannot pass Ron Dennis, probably because of McLaren's Constructors' Championship victory. But we're still leading after our impressive season so far. It looks like we are going to secure 
the uh, Team Managers Championship. So that has been the Malaysian Grand Prix, the inaugural Malaysian Grand Prix of the 1999 season and the penultimate round. And next up, it is all to play for, the Japanese Grand Prix. One more round to go in the 1999 season. Two drivers can win this championship, Michael Schumacher or Mika Hakkinen. Johnny Herbert could secure fourth. More importantly, we are battling for third with the Jordan team. Who will come out on top? You're going to have to find out in the next episode. This is going to be an exciting one. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, guys, it's been DMath96, and I'll see you guys for the final round of the F1 Manager Championship. Catch you guys later. You put a part inside your mind, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing at all. You put a